Florencia, you investigated the role of Australian secret intelligence agencies in the destabilisation of the Allende regime and its overthrow by the Punichet coup. Uh, what led you to this investigation? I've been doing investigation in human rights and all the stories that are around the dictatorships, not specifically what happened during the dictatorships in South America, because there's a lot of literature, but more like the stories of the different protagonists, the, the small stories. But some of the small stories leads you to, you know, big mm. stories, and this is one case. I was doing a lot of interviews to torturers in jail in Uruguay, from the dictator Alvarez and all of them, and one of them told me, because my husband was Australian and he knew. Do you know what Australia did in Chile? And I said, and I was in Uruguay. No, do you know that Australia helped a lot, Pinochet? And it's like, and that, that was in 2008. That was in the back of my head. Mm. And then when I was here thinking of a topic for a PhD, I, th I thought, okay, I'm going to start doing some research. And a lot of people told me, that's now, that's just, you know, that's not real, there's no evidence, nothing. I talked to a lot of researchers and then I found this quote of uh, Clyde Cameron that was in Four Corners and uh, it was in the public domain, but people just forgot and I mm. started pulling the thread and it got bigger, bigger, bigger and that's how I started and then I got, yeah, really hooked by the story because it's not just Chile, it's also Argentina and that hasn't been released yet, but so it's the participation of Australia, secret services in South America. Focusing on the, on, on the situation in Chile and particularly in the period of destabilization of Allende, what exactly did Australian intelligence agents do? Well, there was a mission of the CIA and all that's documented. There is this great author and researcher, American Peter Combler, that he declassified all the files of mm -hmm. the Pinochet case through the National Security Archive, that it's an independent organization mm. within Washington University. It's online, but it's also published. And all the mission of the CIA, all the details of what they did helping the strikes, put in at least $10 million in the period before I, I, I ended. All the CIA mission had four operatives in the field and two bosses. The two bosses were the Australians. It was too obvious for agenda that he had CIA people, so he had an eye on them, so they were restricted. He couldn't move, they couldn't do a lot of things. So the United States had to ask one of their friends. It could have been the Canadians, it could have been mm. the British. But it seems like a, a strange choice to choose Australian agents yeah. from the other side of the world you know, to play this role. Is it mainly because uh, they would not have been the least under suspicion. I don't know if mm. it was Kissinger who made the decision mm. or who was who mm. made the decision that was Australian, that, but it's just because they are allies. So they played a, a, a critical role, would you say? Well, in, they in were commanding the operation. Yes. And they were reporting directly to the CIA. So they were basically working for the CIA? From the Australian Seconded. embassy. They were, yes, and they were inside the Australian embassy posing mm. as diplomats. Was this known to the Australian governments of the time? Yes. The one who made the decision was the foreign minister, McMahon, who then became prime minister. So this was in 1971, 19... 72. Mm -hmm. 71 is when he made the decision, 72 when the operation started. Of course, he knew because he accepted doing it. Gough Whitlam was the following Prime Minister and there is so many stories about how Whitlam led mm. with this. The fact is that Whitlam didn't want the uh, agents to be in Chile and he ordered to take them out, but the, his orders were not followed. So the way he tells the story in his memoirs that nobody was in Chile from the secret agents by mid-September 1973. So he said, well, they were not there, you know, because the mission finished in June 1973. And that's what he wanted it to be, but it was not. Mm. You know, they were still there until October 1973. So there was a lot of of cover-up taking place and I understand that one of the agencies involved was ACES. Yes. And ACES was an agency whose existence was 
was secret. secret. It was created in 1952, mm -hmm. and it was secret at around 1971, 1972. It remained 20 secret years, for 20 it years. It operated as a secret, secret agency. Parliament <laughs> didn't know. Was it the Whitlam government who introduced the Royal Commission to yeah, investigate Yeah, it was security? Whitlam who yeah. asked uh, Justice Robert what, Hope to, to do yeah, it. Yeah, the Hope Commission. Did, yes. did it find out or reveal or expose a lot about the uh, Australian intervention? Well, in Chile? according to Brian Tuhi, right, journalist who mm. wrote this book, Oyster, and Town, Townhill, this, the other author of the book, they say a few things uh, about the fact that there isn't much in the Hope Commission. Robert Hope didn't want to go deep into it, you know, and he could have done it, mm -hmm. and he didn't. He just had the big picture, and mm -hmm. he didn't do it. Now, when you go to the report, all the Chilean chapter is in black. Mm -hmm. So I can say that Justice Robert Hope didn't do a thorough investigation according to the book Oyster. Mm. But we don't know according to the documents because all the Chilean chapter is blacked. Do you believe there has been ongoing attempts by the Australian security agencies to keep this story under wraps or you know, at least to limit the information that's coming out? And do you have any experience yeah. directly of being discouraged from digging too deep. Yeah, the first case is uh, right in 1974. The journalist who um, put this story into the public domain was Ian Frickberg. In 1974, he went with Whitlam just to these presidential trips to the US, and somebody leaked information of what, has hap what happened, and he put it in the Sydney Morning Herald. Another journalist was assigned to go on with the story, to cover the story, and to know who were the the, these people who were exactly mm. the two agents who were there. In those times, it wasn't illegal, as it is now, to name intelligence agents, mm. present or former. Now it's illegal. Mm. Okay. And he couldn't do it, this journalist, because there was a call from ACES to the Sydney Morning Herald to say this is not in the national interest. Mm. And, yeah, and the Sydney Morning Herald decided to stop doing the research. Mm. And they had the names already. Forty years afterwards, I followed then um, the journalist Hamish MacDonald, he tells mm -hmm. all this story, a great journalist, and he asked me, how did you get to the names you have? And it's funny that after 40 years, we follow the same procedure, both of mm -hmm. us, and we go to the same names, and I, I, have, I have them really checked. It's illegal to, to name them, unless the director general, in this case Nick Warner of ACES, mm. allow you to. So I knew they were going to say no, but I cannot work as as on assumptions. So what I did is I made a formal request mm. to publish the names, hoping that they're going to say no, but they could give me some information mm. because I'm not obsessed about putting their names in the public mm. domain. What I want to know is the historical truth. After 40 mm. years, why are the files hidden? Mm. You know, the time frame of 25 years it's, has already expired. Mm. They sent me a letter. Mm saying that I couldn't use, of course, their names, but in that letter, ACES says that I cannot do a lot of things that basically I couldn't release my report at all. And the risk was seven years of jail, no bail. And they gave me a strong uh, advice of seeking mm. my so legal you, you, advice. So you, 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 you ignored some of the advice to put this report out? Well, kind of. What I did is I went to SBS lawyers. Yes. And uh, they said, oh, this is a tricky one because they are saying, most of what you do mm. is against what they are saying you cannot do, you know, because it's how you interpret what's in the national interest, what's risky, what can, because not only given the identities of them, but anything that can relate to their identities. You cannot talk about the details of the operation or anything that can lead to the details of the operation. Mm. So it's really tricky. What we agreed with the lawyers is that we, I would rephrase the report. Mm -hmm. So the report that was released in SBS was all checked by lawyers, hoping that it would pass all the terror mm. laws that we had. Now, what sort of response have you uh, received to this report from uh, members of the Chilean community in Australia, many of whom fled Chile, fleeing the, uh, the, the, the terrors of the Pinochet regime? All of them were really sad, mm. you know, and 
many of them wanted an explanation, some of them wanted an apology from the Australian government, but all of them want to know why, and we want to tell us how it happened. We deserve more information. And some of them didn't understand, I think probably because some of them had a, I don't know if it's naive, but very, very good-hearted people mm. who sometimes uh, are not aware of how evil the, the system is, and it doesn't matter who is in government. It's not that I don't believe in politics, but it does happen. The intelligence services are like overflowing, you know, the political system, and it doesn't matter who is there. There's nothing you can do. So they couldn't relate the fact that the same government that brought them and gave them protection was the government that was helping Pinochet. And that happens all the time. Yeah, know? that is a bit of a contradiction for... for in yeah. the eyes of people who have come here. Do you think that the, the Chileans who fled the Pinochet regime and came here were probably also spied upon by Australian agencies while they were here and perhaps participating in protests? In 1974, there were many protests mm. and demonstrations. One in particular in Melbourne was recorded by ASIO. I could get the footage from the National Archives. Mm. It was quite interesting that mm. I had to ask permission to ASIO to release it. Mm. And they said yes. ASIO, I think, is more relaxed mm -hmm. about their operations than ASIS. Mm -hmm. ASIO are more self-contained and they know that they don't have to report to other agencies. But whereas mm. ASIS work together with the other intelligence services. Do you know of any Chileans who actually suffered consequences as a result of uh, reports on their activities in Australia? The question is, what did ACO do with that footage? Mm. You know, you can make assumptions that that was sent to Chile. Why would you have mm. that footage? Maybe it's just part of the procedures? We don't know because it's secret and we don't mm. have, there's no accountability. For example, Gustavo Martin Montenegro, his car was burned and his house was wired and stuff, you know, but mm. no direct attempts to his person. Mm. I met somebody two weeks ago who told me that she used to work for the federal police and that her job was translating from Spanish to English conversations of Latin Americans who were, mm. were wired. Mm. And I was quite like, surprised and I hope she tells me more about it. In your report for SBS you interviewed a number of Chileans in Australia uh, uh, if you like on both sides of the coup. One of them was uh, a woman who worked for the intelligence agencies in, 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 in Chile. What did you get out of that interview because it was in stark contrast to the other responses particularly for people who were arrested or tortured and detained by the coup. The most interesting thing about all the interview is that she had no problem to talk in camera mm. and tell her story and say that she escaped from Chile using her Australian passport. She escaped from Chile, uh, can you explain? Yes, in uh, 2010 sorry. because she yeah. was prosecuted and the process still open in the court. For her role For in her, in the her case, she given up a murder in eight cases. She couldn't live in Chile because nobody would give her a job because mm. she was prosecuted for that. Mm. In Chile, you, you need like this paper of what is your background, mm. uh, criminal background, something. And when they got uh, her background, nobody would give her a job. Mm. So that's her reason for her to return to Australia, escaping uh, through mm. Argentina. And she said that in camera, who exposes her a lot. Mm. She's convinced that mm. what she did was what she had to do. So are you suggesting that, that um, th there still is, uh, if you like, uh, sympathy from Australia, from institutions, perhaps, to people like her? Well, it can be mm. sympathy or the fact of not doing anything is doing something too. Mm. So whether they are helping her mm. with a specific policy mm. or whether they are not stopping her mm. from mm. coming to Australia, mm. She is Australian citizen, you have to consider that too. Mm. In both cases, mm. there is a responsibility of Australian government, that's my belief. Do you consider this story uh, still unfinished and, and do you intend to look deeper into the question in the future? I hope that the two agents who worked in Chile, I convinced them to tell me what happened. Because the terror laws here, the freedom of information are very limited. Freedom of information accepts all the six agencies, intelligence agencies. So the time frame of 25 years to know the history mm. of a country 
it, it doesn't apply to intelligence. Mm. So it's basically all foreign policy of Australia. When are we going to know? 25, 40, 50? Never. If you don't count on these people who want to talk, you don't have anything. And if you get documents through another source that it's, it's considered illegal, and as a journalist, you can be prosecuted, mm. even if the documents are true. I need to go on doing this research because I think this is just the beginning of it and I'm going to rely also on Chile's documents because I think there's, there's a lot there. Thank you.